Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, I wanted to thank uh, David and the organizers for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. I, I've enjoyed a lot uh, both Vienna and the talks and the, co and the discussions that I've had. Uh, just before, um, uh, just before the talk, I actually, uh, uh, Harald uh, reminded me, um, he told me that he was at our campus, and so I thought I'd put a picture for, for, uh, uh, for you guys to see. It uh, should look soon like this. Uh, the fall is really beautiful uh, there, and uh, this used to be the whole campus a long time ago. So University of Virginia is situated two and a half hours south southeast from uh, Washington, and uh, uh, here you have the. So it was founded by Jefferson. Uh, Jefferson was also partially an architect, uh, so he loved architecture. So actually, he loved uh, uh, octagons. So this is a rotunda. It has kind of an octagonal shape. He loved some. Uh, Harold reminded me some sort of sinusoidal brick walls that we have here on some gardens. This is where the students used to live. This is where some dormitories are, or, uh, which still uh, are very prestigious to be a part of. You get uh, no air conditioning, but you get a fireplace that works and uh, no, uh, uh, no bathroom, one bathroom for a row and everybody wants to be there. I, I don't understand, but uh, <laughs> it's very, <laughs> uh, very prestigious. And uh, so when Jefferson designed it, then uh, so his idea was that uh, sort of here is the knowledge that you, um, you know, acquire. And then there, there didn't used to be this building here. Uh, and uh, sort of uh, the world is yours. You see the horizon. So it was beautiful. But then, of course, it being on the campus and prime real estate, they did something in the Jeffersonian style, but now we have some sort of a concert hall here. So they couldn't. So, no more. Uh, so, I mean, there is a horizon, but maybe towards a kind of concert hall, not towards <laughs> the wild world. Uh, so, anyways, um, so just a. Nice picture for you guys to relax after lunch. Uh, so what I want to talk to you about is um, something that I've uh, 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 actually learned from Oren Raz, but then collaborated with about quite a bunch of people known uh, the, in this audience. So I think this um, right side is known to this audience, Israel Klich and Ori Hirschberg. And uh, also sort of my students uh, uh, have been working on this with me. So what I'll speak about is mainly based on the works we did with Oren, some work we did with Matt, and an upcoming work with Matt. And so, and of course, I should acknowledge the, the funding by NSF. So all right, so what do I mean by anomalous thermal uh, relaxation? So. Um, I uh, learned uh, um, about the Mefemba effect when Oren visited us, uh, and it's been uh, quite some time, but the sort of the modern way of how uh, we like, one of the ways we like to define this effect is sort of if you look at a, a system, a physical system, and you prepare it at some temperature T, T, um, uh, T hot, and then you prepare it at another temperature, one and the same system at some temperature T warm, and you couple your system. So these are two identical preparations to a bath, and the bath is the coldest, so at some temperature Tb. So then in some sen sense, the hot system, which uh, the hot si system overtakes the, the warm system. So in which, which sense? So, <laughs> You are looking at how the systems evolve, how their probability distribution evolves. So initially, the two systems which are closer in temperature, they are, if you, if you quantify by some, some distance function, how far away are they in this probability distribution space, they are closer. And then it's, uh, and as it cools down, sometimes the, the one that uh, had a kind of a, you know, you should think of it as one of them has a late start, and but then arrives first, something like this. Um, so, but really, the 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 effect bears bears the name by um, 
Erasto ba Bartolomeo Mepemba, and he, um, I would say, sort of uh, rediscovered it in the 60s by making ice cream. Making ice cream is always a good idea. So, and making ice cream faster is an extremely good idea. So, <laughs> so, so he wanted to make ice cream faster. His way of making ice cream was by putting in an ice cube tray um, sugar and milk and, uh, uh, and then putting it in the freezer. And one day he just didn't uh, wait long enough and put instead of, you know, cold milk, he put uh, warm milk and then voila, sort of it froze faster. So, <laughs> so since then, sort of, so then, then he asked, uh, the story goes that he asked this question at the physics uh, class and the whole, uh, uh, you know, the whole, uh, classroom laughed, uh, what kind of a nonsense, uh, sort of how could you do this? But then he went on to measure it with uh, Doug Osborne. And uh, so this, uh, you know, experimental results is not something that, that I claim that I can explain to you, neither I want to, but this was, a, I, you should say, uh, I should say kind of like a motivation sort of. So, so what you should see, what they measured is they measured uh, some sort of initial temperature uh, and, um, you know, and then, then they measured, uh, and then they were cooling their, their system down. And the only thing I want you to see that it's non-monotonic. Sort of, if you start being nitpicky, that's what gets, uh, that, that, that's what gets you excited. And that, that's why you start studying this kind of non-monotonous or anomalous effects. And well, nitpicky could be sort of, uh, how does it happen? Why didn't they measure anything here? How do you define this time to start freezing? Is it when, how much slush between ice and water? So, so um, uh, if you uh, have objections, uh, you know, to the, to, the, to the experimental figure, great. So we are, <laughs> we are in the same club, sort of. Uh, so, but uh, nevertheless, uh, um, there, ne ne nevertheless uh, I want to tell you how to think about it, sort of how to, um, um, uh huh. So this is the. There is one figure that I'm missing. I knew I was missing something. So so anyway. So I have two identical systems, and they are coupled to a bar. And um, if uh, your intuition is like mine, it's a uh, it's a uh, kind of quasi static. <laughs> That's so. First thing you think about is uh, so. Okay, I prepared my uh, prepared my system at a hot temperature, and and then well, I mean you know I cool it down slowly. Uh, 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 sort of no matter what this. Uh, highly dimensional spaces as it cools down, it has kind of some um, temperature that it equilibrates to. And then of course, I mean, the, uh, you know, eventually it equilibrates to the, to the second starting point of the starting point of the second system. And well then necessarily this trajectory of the warm system is closer uh, than the trajectory of the hot system. No surprise. So you 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 cannot quasi statically uh, uh, have this kind of a shortcut in the relaxation. But if you quench things, then you know that your starting location is just a label. There is no temperature anywhere in between except for time zero and time inf infinity. And then you can ask a question: uh, With what probability am I in the vicinity of uh, of the? Ba uh, bath temperature at large times. So, and then, and then sort of in the limit of your system going to T infinity, you can, you can pick your, uh, it might be problem dependent, sort of your favorite norm of how you're going to uh, assess whether one system overtook the other. So, and if you do this kind of uh, uh, quenching, then um, there is no problem of having such a shortcut in cooling in fact, there is no problem of having such a shortcut in heating, which is nowadays known as the inverse Mepemba effect, and it was predicted by Oren and Jiu, and then later on it was experimentally found by these three guys, so Kumar, Chitrit, and Bechhofer. And so, um, right. Uh, by the way, I love questions. Any questions, anytime are welcome. So, um, um, all right, so observations since then, uh, sort of we move on from water, you have many observations in the experiment. So there is water, then there is another uh, substance that has a lot of hydrogen bonds, then granular fluids, then colloids in optical lattices and polymers, numeric. So there's also a rich uh, 
selection of uh, uh, systems where people have seen this kind of or related, uh, 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 well, the whole audience also says that is anomalous uh, uh, effect, so uh, it should not be surprising. So um, then uh, lots of insights and applications. So, okay, so the modern definition, I know thanks to Gio and Oren, uh, and I also know the minimal set of ingredients needed for the effect, but then this list is quite long, and, uh, uh, and uh, here I uh, um, uh, maybe highlighted more the, the people that are in the audience, uh, sort of, but, uh, uh, well, if I am, uh, let me see, um, if I were to, uh, right, so, so you can, of course, play this game with a non-equilibrium steady states, as we know from Udo, uh, and then you can, uh, um, insta so instead of temperature, you can use uh, properties of the potential, then you can have um, surprises, like an optimal uh, heating protocol, which requires pre-cooling, and uh, uh, links to phase transitions, thanks to uh, Rui and Oren, but uh, uh, let's get to the, um, uh, further along the talk. So, um, okay, so for a general system. So you, so what are the, um, so first two things that I wanted to know, uh, and uh, uh, sort of one was already answered by Oren, and the other ones then we answered together, uh, sort of, uh, uh, so what are the minimal ingredients? So you, uh, so you assume some dynamics. This, so this is very simple dynamics where you're, um, you can think about discrete systems, you can think about continuous systems. Uh, I'm going to think about continuous systems and an overdamped Langevin equation in a second, but uh, uh, in this uh, beginning part of the talk, maybe it's easier instead of an operator to write a metric. So uh, sometimes I'll t talk about discrete problems. So you have this relaxation dynamic, your initial condition is the uh, equilibrium at uh, temperature T, your final uh, uh, your final condition is you uh, arrive to your environment, and for simplicity, let's say that uh, your uh, relaxation matrix uh, uh, just depends on the environment. Um, so then, uh, how would you measure such an effect? Uh, well, I mean, uh, sort of, you can switch your problem into an eigenvalue problem, uh, you can solve your eigenvalue problem. Uh, the, over, uh, the, the most interesting part and the key kind of uh, uh, quantity will be this overlap uh, because it's sensitive, sensitive to your starting point, to your label, to your initial condition. So then you choose your favorite measure of distance. Uh, in this case, it's a kind of um, poor black library divergence. And then uh, sort of um, when your warm system, when your hot system overtakes the warm system as they relax um, sort of towards equilibrium, then you know that well, your effect has happened. Um, yes. Sorry, R is R is my relaxation matrix. Sort of everything is the ma it's 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 uh, it's the um, it's the right hand side of my equation. So and then uh, uh, well, you can you can solve this uh, for the probability distribution function. You can just expand it in some set of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Yes. Of course, because it's the evolution of the probability distribution function. It, the, the dynamics itself may be uh, nonlinear, but on this level, of course, it's linear, but it's a very highly dimensional space. There was another question. Okay, so then you look at the long time limit. In the long time limit, you get, you, uh, if you assume that you have a gap, you only care about kind of uh, corrections to the, your slowest mode. And then you ask, uh, when do I have the effect? So I have the effect when, so you know that if you already started with the correct probability distribution, there is no, uh, there is no cooling no, uh, going on. Uh, um, and uh, so then, uh, okay, fine, you're already here. So this point has to be zero, the correction is zero. Uh, and at large times, you know that your probability distribution is uniform, so you know that it flattens to a constant. So basically, you have the effect if, if this function, this overlap to the initial condition is non-monotonous, sort of, if you can find that it's non-monotonous, then it means you have the effect. So then, uh, um, so, so the simplest 
simplest case. And so, of course, you have to have some sort of, uh, you know, uh, your, your, your dynamics must be convergent. Suppose it's convergent to, to a, so then you have detailed balance. The simplest case is a three-level system. Most things in physics are, are, are with the, done with two-level system, but here it seems that the minimal number is three. Okay, so, uh, so um, okay, so fine. So then, uh, um, but can you make it more dramatic? So it turns out, yes, you can, because, uh, well, uh, while, while this point here is a zero, sort of, and, but nobody tells you that, uh, you know, uh, whether this constant is positive or negative when you go to kind of very large temperatures. So in principle, you can have a zero crossing here. So what does a zero crossing mean? So it means that you nailed it. You, you, managed, to, uh, you managed to kind of have a uh, uh, zero overlap to the slowest mode, okay? So then you can, uh, then you can say uh, sort of, so what happens then? So your system immediately just doesn't have, it's orthogonal to this uh, slowest mode. So it immediately relaxes with, with the time scale, which is related to the uh, second non-zero eigenvalue, not the, uh, so, so, and then that uh, sort of this jump in this relaxation time, we call the strong Mopemba effect. And the reason why we liked it is, well, if you, you know, pin down one zero here and pin down a constant there, well, then it's sort of kind of you control the ends, and then and then you can then you can by knowing what the ends are, you can know how many zeros you have. Maybe you cannot count the odd uh, uh, the the even number of zeros if you disregard this one, but you can definitely count an odd number of zeros. So so how would you count an odd number of zeros? So well, I mean you would measure the derivative here and you would measure the value of the constant there and sort of by knowing what and systems are usually better behaved, you know, at the extremes. So 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 I can I can then have a lower bound if you want whether or not my effect has occurred by observing what happens at t infinity where things are easier and at and at tb. Okay, so, so then that's great. Uh, so then we went on and uh, did a bunch of systems. One is the antiferromagnet and it was on a uh, complete bipartite graph and we had some Glauber dynamics and we got a beautiful picture of, uh, with lots of different colors indicating of how your system relaxes. White means boring, there is no Mopemba effect. Uh, other colors on this graph mean uh, uh, that, um, mean that you have so now I need to decipher this for you, sort of, because we uh, uh, sort of, uh, right, strong means this effect that you, you have a, a jump in the relaxation time, and, uh, but then, uh, yes? Oh yes, of course, sorry, I, 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 was, I, was, ru I was rushing because I wanted to get to a, another system, so fine. So, so you have an antiferromagnet, it's completely described by two, uh, by two well, there will be two order parameters, so it depends on which way you like to talk about it. Magnetization density or sta staggered magnetization density or the magnetization of one sub lattice and another, one sub graph and another sub graph. This guy here is connected to everybody from the green group, and, and, but nobody from his own group. Okay, so it's a very simple model. It is solvable, uh, that's why we chose it, uh, and uh, uh, analytically, and then a sort of, uh, then we chose a dynamics. Uh, it appears for a variety of different dynamics, but we chose Glauber. And uh, so we got this picture. Uh, yes? Okay, so, um, um, so uh, <laughs> yes and no. Uh, so uh, if I ha uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, in the sense that uh, sort of I have here two order parameters, and it's easier to play this game on how to kind of uh, create a shortcut and overtake with two order parameters. No, uh, as far as I know, uh, sort of uh, uh, no matter uh, how much uh, uh, how uh, how much uh, my uh, collaborators work. Uh, and Oren can correct me, this, we haven't observed it in the ferromagnet, even uh, when it's not non-mean field. If it's mean field, then, then probably doesn't exist. You have a single order parameter, sort of how do you shrink a Gaussian, you just change its variance and it's kind of pretty boring. Uh, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes.
Uh, no, but it would be... Aha. Uh -huh. that, that would be interesting to, to look at. Yes, yes. Sorry, uh, why the, why the, uh, e right, so uh, there are systems in which I, c depends on the system, there are systems in which I can tie it more to some intuition and there are those where the, but it, I, uh, uh, there are those where I cannot, right? Mm -hmm. Where it remains. Yes, uh, um, there was another. Okay. Uh, Anyways, you can do the play. Uh, uh, so the other question we wanted to ask and answer, the sort of we looked at a random energy model and the reason why we wanted to look at here, we wanted to, we wanted to see whether, okay, is this a needle in a haystack or not? Do you want, uh, should I care or should I not care? Sort of, can I go and tell an experimentalist you should be excited about this because uh, in the vicinity, maybe you cannot position your system precisely at the strong Mpemba effect, but uh, in the vicinity of the strong Mpemba effect, your system will relax faster and so, and then we checked, uh, and uh, one way to check now, now the fact that you can measure, now the fact that you can measure this uh, sort of, uh, whether or not your, your uh, overlap had an odd number of zeros, sort of uh, this kind of topological thing, what's the value of your overlap at T infinity, this is the initial temperature, and at, and at, and at the bath temperature, the derivative, and then you take a heavy side function of this, and a minus for good measure and the measure that the probability that it's, it's larger than zero anyway it's sort of this probability is finite sort of and then we managed to go to thermodynamic limit uh, sort of uh, in a in the antiferromagnet uh, analytically and in the random energy model just uh, numerically sort of and we ma managed to have a bunch of nice analytical results and and this one sort of it will not satisfy Christian but uh, uh, because it's uh, here we approximated the second eigenvector and uh, in order to get the uh, theory but I'm very proud of this because actually we managed you know uh, sort of um, okay so the points are a direct uh, numerical diagonalization of matrices we we took 400 realizations for each point and you just uh, this uh, sort of, the y-axis here is this uh, uh, probability that, uh, uh, probability that uh, this quantity here is, uh, is positive, this thing that I call the Mpemba x index. So, but, the, but this graph is, if you want, sort of numerically very easy to do, sort of you change your dynamics. Imagine these are, uh, these are matrices that depend as a parameter of this temperature of the bath and you, and you, and, and yes, it's easy to diagnose them numerically, but to get this uh, orange line, we had to uh, guess the second eigenvector for, for this uh, uh, system where we had a, a quenched uh, disorder of, uh, well, 10 energy levels. Our energies were taken from uh, 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 normally distributed and also our our uh, hopping barriers between these energies were also normally distributed. So this was kind of highly untrivial to get. 
to guess this second eigenvector. So, but uh, so 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 we answered the kind of the questions uh, that it is uh, general enough. It appears in a bunch of one second. It appears in a bunch of systems, and it is uh, uh, it, it appears with finite probability. And then, and then we were still, and to this day, sort of scratching our heads about the intuition, and sort of this brings me to the second part, but a much simpler system. Yes, you had a question. Okay, uh, the previous one. How does this probability depend on the size of the system or the number of these uh, uh, energies? Uh, uh, um, I, uh, uh, I, I have it in the details in the in the in the paper. I, I do, do, don't re, don't don't recall. I do re, I, the one thing I do recall that we needed to uh, this transition probabilities between this uh, uh, quenched disordered realization had to be rather wide, sort of for the whole thing to work for the approximation to work well uh, to the second uh, uh, eigenvector, and it's. Um, quite a nice um, approximation, sort of, you start off with a random guess of your second eigenvector, you make, you make sure that it's orthogonal to, to, the, to, the, to the thing that you know, which is the probability, which, which is the ground state, and uh, then it turns out that you somehow can compute this uh, probability, so, so um, okay, so intuition, so, so right, so, so that, uh, so the, so the, so well, so the very first paper that I that I read, uh, which uh, uh, was uh, by Jiu Lu and Oren Razen, and the picture went like this, something like, well, uh, let's say I want to look at an overdamped dynamics, and uh, so then that means that I, you know, my, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the, the, this one is uh, supposed to be the bath. Bath is the coldest one, <laughs> sort of. So, so the probability distribution of the bath is the one where where I kind of uh, where my my particle. Now I'm talking about an overdamped uh, limit of a particle, so it's diffusing and it's uh, and it's subject to this potential, so which I represent here as a landscape. And so the and the idea is roughly well, I mean, sort of. Uh, it, it seems to be much easier to morph this, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, warm. Uh, uh, probability distribution of the warm system uh, to the to the to this uh, to the to the bath then then the hot one the hot one is kind of like flat but actually when you look at it you can view it two ways you can view it the the the, the one that's kind of mostly flat the hot one there are a few guys that are because this hill is small few guys which are in a metastable state that relax slowly and there are many guys that are re relaxing fast in a shallow uh, uh, in a shallow yet wide, uh, uh, wide maximum. So then I kind of understood from this picture, so metastable states must play a role and the geometry of the wells must play a role. So probably I can design a potential for which my effect will happen. And so then uh, uh, indeed, uh, so uh, um, experimentally, uh, Betchhofer and Kumar, they designed the system, this was their double well, and uh, then, uh, so what you do is you have a colloid, it's immersed in water, and it's held by optical tweezers, uh, and uh, you, uh, you, you, uh, you, you let it diffuse, and uh, you, know, you discretize these positions, and, and basically you let it diffuse once as if uh, uh, you do this experiment many, many times, and you choose the initial uh, uh, an initial point uh, from the corresponding uh, 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 equilibrium distribution. If it's a warm start from the warm temperature, if it's a hot start from the hot temperature, <laughs> sort of meaning uniformly, and then and then and then you uh, and then you see where it. Um, then you measure how your system relaxes after these many realizations, and it turns out that uh, well, uh, for a particular choice of a warm start and a hot start. Uh, you know, your, uh, there is um, the hot system does overtake the uh, does overtake the uh, warm one, and you observe the effect. Now, um, so so they said so so, and they made sure that their wells are well separated and that they have metastability. So that was great. So then, then they also made sure 
that uh, the, the potential had uh, kind of like uh, different <laughs> shapes here, uh, sort of it's, it's asymmetric and they quantified this as asymmetry and they found that for strong asymmetry, if you measure the equilibration time, there is a dip in this equilibration time. Remember I told you when you have the strong Mapemba effect that your time scale will, will jump, it won't be dominated by one, uh, it will be kind of, uh, uh, if you are exactly at that temperature, it will be one over lambda three instead of lambda two. So this is this dip for kind of high asymmetry. Um, so, uh, so they were the first ones to observe this effect that, uh, that uh, we predicted uh, with the uh, Oren, Israel and Dori. And, uh, but then, uh, you know, you still ask, but okay, but when does it happen? So uh, sort of what do I need to know about my landscape for it to, ha it to happen? Uh, and uh, 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 so, so then, and then you start of knocking uh, one by one the simplest cases where, where you can solve things analytically. So one of these things is, well, okay, Orstein, Uhlenbeck, does it happen? And so, no, I'm sorry, no Mapemba effect of any kind for Orstein, Uhlenbeck, sort of. Uh, then, uh, then you say, okay, so let me, op let me look up my, uh, you know, uh, undergraduate quantum mechanics, uh, uh, sort of, let me, be uh, uh, because I can always kind of write down um, uh, I mean, this is uh, some sort of a, a diffusion operator and it, it looks like a Sch Sch Schrodinger operator. And so anyway, so for a bistable constant potential, so, um, so we saw, uh, so, so with this, uh, so with the, my student, we looked at this problem. It turns out uh, sort of some cases of this problem, uh, namely for kind of, uh, if it's um, symmetric, uh, were known by, were solved by, Merce, Riskin, and Wallner already. So, so anyway, so we could solve this problem and we could find out a, a sort of a, a phase diagram uh, where you have the, uh, so the green uh, region in this, so this is, so you fix one level to zero and then you play around with these heights and play along with this width and another height. And so then sort of the, uh, the, Result here is that in this green region, you have the uh, um, strong Mapemba effect for cooling. Uh, in the yellow region, you have the strong Mapemba effect for heating. And in the blue region, there's no Mapemba effect whatsoever. And uh, then you put this alpha to zero. So, and then the picture changes. And so, and in each case, we had an analytical expression that we could. Mm -hmm. I can, I, I can. For example, for the antiferromagnet, the reason why I had so many different colors is that I could have multiple zeros, uh, uh, sort of uh, not, just, uh, not just a single zero and, and I could have a zero sort of, uh, uh, and uh, I can also look at in the similar way uh, as I looked at, you know, the endpoints, whether or not I have the strong effect uh, sort of in the region for cooling for between T bath and infinity, I can also look at it between T bath and zero. So that, that's also another thing. Uh, here, they are, here they are disjoint. Uh, uh, probably the uh, 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 system is too, too, too simple. Already for, for example, for uh, uh, slightly complicated systems, you get them to, to be so, but then you can kind of vary the width of this potential and get different pictures. So, so then, okay, so then uh, some, uh, uh, all right, so a so, 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 little bit of intuition. Yes. Precisely, here it's prescribed. Here I have overdamped Langevin. So, so here, uh, here uh, uh, I don't have this uh, knob, right? But in, if I'm looking at spin systems, I could choose uh, different types of relaxation dynamics. Yes. Yes, correctly. Yes, uh, yeah, uh, yes, and that that will change things. The the uh, uh, sort of the yes. 
Yes, and I would love to look at this because how it's related, how many defects you have as you, uh, depending on the speed, how you go through a phase transition. Yes, definitely, these things are highly related. So here, a tiny, tiny bit of intuition, maybe uh, sort of. Uh, so uh, the effect I only have in the region where, uh, so U1, well, the left, uh, left, uh, uh, the left region. Let's call them left, right, and middle region, where the left region is. Uh, higher than the middle region, but the middle region is uh, um, uh, smaller uh, than, the, than, the, than, the, than the right region. So basically, I don't have <laughs> the effect if the middle region is a barrier. So contrary to, so in this, uh, in this kind of like, uh, 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 you know, for this uh, bizarre potential, sort of, uh, I, uh, I don't have what this picture uh, uh, that, uh, you know, bo uh, uh, we saw experimentally and uh, sort of, and this uh, kind of like hand waving theoretically, you have to have a metastable state to, to, to have the effect. Here, opposite, here, if I have a metastable effect, I don't, uh, I don't see the strong Lefebvre effect. So this was a, this was one, 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 one surprise. And then you can make it uh, more precise, uh, sort of, uh, you know, uh, if you remove a meta, uh, sort of, uh, you, uh, uh, you know, if you uh, introduce the metastable state, you will lose the effect. Uh, so if you go this way, and if you uh, remove a metastable state, it doesn't mean that you'll gain the, uh, gain the effect. So, so, uh, well then, okay. Then, then, then we then we asked, okay, but when, when really, when does it happen? So then we quantified some sort of. Uh, so, so I, I wouldn't say that we have fully nailed the intuition in in, the, in this case, but, but we saw that this effect happens when this kind of. Me, uh, so we looked at the cumulat cumulative probability to be in a one uh, region one and region two, and we saw at least that uh, for one value of our parameter alpha, that is the symmetric uh, flanking regions, that, uh, that if this mismatch of the cumulative probability at uh, uh, time of the, the ratio of the mismatch of the cumulative probability between the uh, TB and, uh, and time when you have the strong Mepemba um, effect has to be one. So at least sort of one sort of uh, thing where we found some, 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 something. Uh, some sort of uh, intuition uh, so um, for this. Uh, so then, okay, so, but then, uh, then there is another thing uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, I learned from uh, uh, Kumar and Bechhofer, and I uh, sort of, uh, and I was fascinated by it. And the thing that I learned from them, the intuition I learned from them is that uh, they observed in the case, so, sorry, for maybe speaking too fast, I was looking at this potential with two kind of square, uh, we, we, everything was kind of piecewise continuous. Now, if you go back where everything is smooth, because maybe when things are smooth, it's easier to parse <laughs> uh, or to, to compute things, and uh, things are less singular, uh, sort of, so then, and then you look at the, the, the Kumar and Bechhofer uh, example again. So what they taught me is that they see the effect when uh, the strong Mepemba effect at the point where the cumulative probability to be at the left well at, at T strong Mepemba is the same as the cumulative uh, probability to be at the, at the bar. Okay, that, that's, that's, when this temp, that's where this effect happens. They measure this overlap, uh, um, overlap parameter that I keep calling A2, so the projection of your initial conditions uh, uh, of your uh, left, uh, uh, um, non-zero eigenvector, uh, sort of, uh, uh, so, and they, see, and they see that indeed when this, and so the blue one is the cumulative probability, and, uh, and this one is the, um, so, all right, so. Uh, how do they experimentally measure this uh, A2? Um, experimentally, they, uh, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I looked at the 
theoretical part of it. So, I'll, uh, uh, so, 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 but they definitely could measure the cumulative probability to be in the wells, and they do. They saw it the same when they have the dip. Okay, so uh, maybe Oren knows how they measure it too. But uh, 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 so um, so for me, this meant that the effect, the strong Mafemba effect happens if you already all of this. If you think about some sort of particles hopping between the wells, it, it happens when if all of the guys that were supposed to be there are already there. They're just not in just not forming the correct shape together. So when the or in other words, when, when, when the, I mean, you do have tunneling over the barrier, but you have a metastable states when, when no tunneling is needed already to achieve the statistical weight. It's like some sort of, uh, uh, so, so, uh, so I like this story, uh, and it's kind of, to me, it's connected to, 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 to instantons. And then I kept thinking about it and sort of, and then, uh, uh, well, uh, sort of this was already, uh, um, uh, uh, right, so, um, we mentioned it to uh, David and others, and sort of. So, so what, what, what would happen then? So, so then, well, then the, the your current. Uh, what, what would happen is if your if your probability current at a fixed uh, position, you know, at large times uh, relaxes with kind of uh, the log of it uh, uh, lambda t two. So, so at the strong Mafemba effect, it would la uh, the, so this point where it starts to re the, be it would be more and more dominated with one over, with uh, with lambda three, and it would kind of. And this point would go to infinity, but this is a fine point, sort of. And then, uh, um, all right. So then I thought, like, okay, let's find another problem where we can solve things. And uh, so, sort of. And actually, the idea for this came from uh, Baruch when I met him in uh, Santa Fe. Sort of. Why don't you look at the Kramers problem? So a Kramers problem at at uh, small diffusions and large barrier limits, sort of. So you can find the second eigenvector. So 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 he, so so then I found the second eigenvector, and uh, sort of and then sort of, and so in, so this is now already in uh, preparation. And so and indeed, it sort of it seems that that this cumulative probability that, that it matches where this overlap is zero, sort of, uh, um, and. Uh, and then, uh, uh, okay, uh, and, uh, not another discussion with David, sort of, but uh, this, I, uh, sort of, the whole problem depends from the very beginning, uh, you know, from the ratio between, uh, 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 the, between the uh, um, uh, potential and the, and, the, and the temperature or the potential and the diffusion coefficient. So actually, if you rescale them, uh, sort of, you can, uh, you know, Basically, what I want to say, you found one strong Mafemba effect. You, you found an, an infinite family because you can just rescale it. You can absorb this uh, sort of uh, diffusion coefficient into time. So, actu so actually, it happens um, infinitely many times. So, um, uh, right. So, okay. Uh, summary. I'm excited about this problem, which you can probably tell. Uh, the Mpemba um, effect uh, sort of uh, is, a, is a general thing. Uh, it has a neat, uh, if you look at the, uh, this jump in the relaxation time, the strong Mpemba effect, it, it has features so that you can look at the ends and, and say what happens at finite temperatures, which is always nice. Uh, and then uh, we continue to uh, look uh, for simple problems to get intuition. The intuition must come from the, uh, your knowledge about what the slowed modes are doing. If I take a very complicated system like water, I have at this present point no clue what the slow modes are doing, and especially not what they're doing uh, for some particular dynamics. So this is an effect where the dynamics are important and, and knowing the knowing the slowest modes of your system. And so, uh, right, so I think I have to stop. <laughs> Thank you.